This is Dr. Carroll, and today's video is a case study of algorithm analysis comparing sequential search versus binary search. Okay, so first off, let's talk about sequential search. So we have here a, uh, a list, or we're going to use a, an array of numbers here. I just picked some random numbers, and then I also showed what the indices would have if they were sorted. Okay. So a sequential search is then going to go down the list and looking for the, the item in question. And it's going to stop if it finds the item. Okay, So pretty simple. We've been doing that before. You've probably been doing that since your first computer science class. So what is its big O? Well, let's first start with the worst case analysis. Worst case is what? We had to go through the entire uh, array, and we, we didn't find it at all. And so we, we have to look through everything, OK? So then we have to look through n numbers. All right. Now let's talk about the average case. What would the average case be? On average, we're going to look through the list, and we're going to find it about, on average, halfway through the list. Sometimes we'll find it first one, sometimes we'll find it last one, sometimes we won't find it at all, or if, if the item is there. Then, on average, it's going to go through about halfway through the list, so halfway through our input size. Well, but that's not how we write a big O expression, so then we can say it, the average case is also big O of n. Now, we usually don't talk about best case, but let's talk about it here. Best case is First number it looks at, it found it. Great. Order one. Okay, so that's sequential search. Now let's talk about binary search. Now using a sorted array, and that's important, it has to use a sorted array. We'll come back to that in a little bit. It iteratively divides the search space that we're looking at in half. Half, 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 half. And so let's talk about how it does that. It looks at the middle element on each iteration. And it has three scenarios it's going to do. So for example, here in our sorted array, and we're looking for, let's say, 42. It's going to take 7 minus 0 plus 0 divided by 2. That equals 3, integer division. Okay, And it's going to look at 57. That's going to be our middle element of our sorted portion. So now we have three scenarios. One is it's the item we're looking for. No, 57 is not 42. Two, the item is larger than the item we're looking for. And, well, that's the condition here. And we need to set the upper boundary that we're looking for to one less than that and continue. Because 42 is somewhere over here. If we've just looked at one number, we only know that one number. And so we know it's somewhere between 0 and index 2. The other option is if it's smaller, well, then that means it's somewhere up here. That'd be, for example, if we're looking for 81, then we would look somewhere on in this half. Okay, so let's put a little bit more code around that. Uh, we want to do this while our upper boundary and our lower boundary haven't crossed. Okay, that's important. And so we're just going to look at the middle index on the array, and if it's our search term, and the other the else is if what's in the middle is larger and then we can just say else there's no reason to do an else if here that would actually be just a waste of computation so if it is a search term great we're done return the index of what we're looking for if it's not we need to change the upper boundary and then that'll this will cause that the middle value needs to be updated where we take the lower plus the uh, lower plus upper and divide by two and um, update that. And then alternatively, we need to change the lower. We need to make it jump up. So for example, here, we're looking for 42. Our lower is going to be 0. Our upper is going to be 3. And then uh, 57 is larger than 42. So then we change the upper to 38. We would then analyze 23 here. And then 23 is less than, so then we would change the lower boundary to be 2. And by the way, the upper boundary is still 2. We'd look and then we would say, hey, the, um, 
the, this value is smaller than 42. And then at that point, we'd hit the while loop and it'd say, hey, our lower is actually greater than our upper. And so we would return something like not found. Okay. So that's binary search. Very cool algorithm. Cut the search space in half and half and half. Okay, now let's figure out what the big O is for it. So what is the worst case number of iteration that binary search requires? So each iteration, it divides the search space in half, right? So then after one iteration, we have the search space N is divided by two. The next iteration, it's the search space is divided um, into, or into two N divided by two to the squared. And so let's change that notation here for the first one. It's really two to the first. And then we continue, we cut it in half each time. So we're increasing the exponent on our squared here until it continues until we're left with one item left, okay? And that's when it gets small enough, okay? So now let's write that algebraically. So the number of iterations it's gonna take is how long does it take for um, n divided by 2 to the k to equal 1. Well, let's simplify this, okay? Let's move it around. Let's um, n equals 2 to the k, okay? So that, that's how long it's going to take. But now let's um, switch that around just to get things on the right side. Now let's get it in terms of n, it, sorry, let's get k in terms of n because that's what algorithm analysis is in terms of n, okay? So let's get k in terms of n. We need to take log base 2 of both sides, okay? Now log base 2 of 2 to the k is going to be k, and log base 2 of n is still log of n. So it's going to require this, it required k steps, and k is log base 2 of n. So binary search is then order log base 2 of n. Well, with the bases for log, they they don't play into the order. They both all grow at the same, they all have the same growth rate. So we more formally would just say it's order log n, okay? Which is um, better than uh, order n for sequential search. Let's look again at those graphs that we, we have here, okay? So we're talking about the difference between the, the green one, which you can't see in this graph, sorry. The, the, the green one here is um, going to be binary search, and the blue one here is going to be sequential search. Well, when we're getting up to 10,000, it makes a big difference. Once again, if we're dealing with 10, not a big deal. The difference between 1 and 10 isn't really that great in terms of number of steps, whereas you get to 10,000, it makes a huge difference in how long we're going to have to wait or whatnot. Now, for completeness, what if n is not a power of 2? Well, then you find the smallest k such that it's between the smaller one and the one above. It turns out k then is 1 plus log base of 2. So take a big O of that, it's not going to, it's not going to change the big O uh, for binary search. Now, remember what we said at the beginning, um, that it takes um, a sorted array. So if you have to sort the array, then it's actually going to take longer. So if you insert items more frequently, much more frequently than you search for an item, then maybe sequential search actually is the way to go. It's hard for us to generally say that one algorithm is universally better than another one. Um, sometimes it depends on the scenario of what you're talking about. Um, and that's it for our case study.